Alright, welcome back everybody. So we are going to be doing a painting of this caricature here. So I'm going to show you how to set it up. And I've got my picture uh, I took of my drawing. And we're going to straighten it out. We're going to do a few things, get it set up, and then paint it. So uh, we're going to be working in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. Now I'm going to hit some um, basics in Photoshop, but uh, not too many. I'm kind of assuming you already know a bit about it, so I might hit in pretty quickly. And if you need more information, you're going to have to hit like a, maybe a more basic tutorial. So I'm going to hit Create New. I'm going to use a letter size paper. It's always good to know what kind of paper you have or what size it is. The resolution is going to be 300. And I'm going to do um, the, uh, this style, not a landscape, portrait style because it's uh, kind of more the shape of the drawing I made. Okay, so I've got my document here. Next thing I want to do is I need to bring it in. So I just like to drag it in and it's going to create a new layer. So let's go ahead and drag it in here. And I know I need to fit it correctly, but I need to straighten it out first and I kind of want to see these lines. So I'm just going to hit return. And this isn't really a problem. Uh, so return got me out of that transform mode where I had the X there. When you when you drag something in, that's how it goes. But I can see here because of this little icon that I am in the um, a smart object. Okay, it's that means the object is linked from another file. So that's good because I can mess with it. So I've got my ruler out. If you don't command R, puts the ruler on and off. I'm going to drag some guides over here and kind of put them in line with my paper. That way I know how I have to change and manipulate my image. So, I'm on this layer here with the drawing on it, with my photograph, and first thing I'm going to do is just straighten it out here. So I'm going to go Edit, Transform, and I am going to distort it. And I'm taking these bottom little uh, squares here and kind of bringing it out so it's more in line. Now, n knowing that I did this, I kind of made it a little wider, but but the angle was funny, so it needed to be made a little wider. But just because I know perspective, it probably needed to be made a little bit longer as well. Just because if I'm going to make it wider, that means we're seeing it at an angle, which means that this would actually be a little bit longer if I was making, looking at it straight on. So I'm just kind of guesstimating. And really, you just need to look at uh, your picture and see what looks good. So decide what you're happy with. I think I can work with this. And uh, so I dragged it long. Uh, so this, I can see how far down I pulled it here. Not too much, because it wasn't too distorted. That picture wasn't too bad. So let's see if I go like that. I can see that it's way too long, right? You just have to kind of guesstimate and see what looks good. OK, so I think I can live with this here. Looks straight enough. Then I'm going to hit Return to get out of that Transform mode. And then I can get rid of these guides by going View, Clear Guides. Okay, now they're gone. And by the way, zooming in and out, Command Plus, Command Minus on the keyboard. Okay, so I'm still in a smart object. Okay, that means I can't uh, draw on this layer. It's a, it's a linked file. I can't really draw on it. So before I change it, I'm going to transform it again. I'm going to go Edit Transform, Scale. And again, I'm on this layer. And what I want to do now is I'm not going to hold any buttons down and I'm just going to drag corners so that it makes um, a nice proportional um, well, it keeps it nice and proportional let's say that when I make it bigger I'm going to try and fill the page a little more with my picture I don't want to go right to the edge it's a little kind of goofy but I do want it to be bigger because it's the only thing I don't have any background in here and if I ever wanted to do something else to it I could you know I could still paint Okay, so I got that kind of situated how I want it. I'm going to hit return or enter again. And now we got a few things to deal with. One being um, all the stuff around in my sketch that I need to get rid of and the color. The color is way off, but it's not going to matter so much uh, shortly. So let's go ahead and change this to a rasterized layer. Now, or rasterize the layer, sorry. And I can do that by right clicking on the uh, bar over here, not on the icon. It gives you different options. All right, I don't want to do it there. I want to right click over here and I'm going to rasterize the layer. Okay, now that you can see that got rid of those little uh, icons there. And that means that now I can change the layer, I can paint on it, I can change the pixels before I could not really change the pixels. 
I also, I'm going to double click here and change it, the name of the layer to ink. I put it to ink because that's, um, this is my inked layer for the drawing here. All right, got it set up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, just because all this is going to bug me, so I'm just going to go ahead and paint white there. So I'm going to switch the palettes here to white. I'm going to get my brush. And I'm going to change it to a kind of solid brush right here. No, no, it's not even solid enough. Let me get a hard round one. That's fine. And I'm looking at here, the opacity is 100. Just, just double checking everything. Uh, flow is 100. That's good. And I can make it larger by holding down a bracket. And I'm just going to kind of get rid of everything. This is all going to be white eventually anyways, or actually gotten rid of. So it's just a little bit of cleanup here. Get rid of all that. So here we go. I got the surrounding area. I don't need to get any closer to her. That's going to be fine. Okay, so now let's go ahead and we need to do a levels adjustment. So image, adjustments, levels. And I'm going to look at what it does to this. And I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to drag this in. You see it's making her lighter. Drag this over. See, that makes it too dark. So I'm going to drag the mids this way. I want to go lighter. I'm trying to get get this a little more extreme, trying to get rid of some of these little lines here. I can bring the darks in over here so it darkens up my, my lines a little bit. And that's pretty good for now. I'm going to hit OK. All right, and now here's where the uh, magic is here. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjust, and now I'm going to do a threshold right here. Okay, so what this does is it basically makes a threshold where everything becomes either black or white. So you can kind of vary it over here and see. So it takes, you know, uh, here it's going to take little bits and, you know, little kind of stray marks and make them black. But I want it to be less than that. So I'm going to go this way. And I want it to only pick up like the darkest things I drew. So I'm going to bring it over here. And I'm just kind of looking at the line, seeing what looks good. If I do too little, it won't pick up enough detail. Oops. So that's too little, I think. And again, I can always fix things after as well. So find out what looks good in your drawing. Okay, I think a little darker is better because I have all that black in there. And I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. Now she's just perfectly black and white. And I can go and clean up things if I need to. Let's go here and change it to the pencil tool, okay? Because I want just straight black and white. I don't want any like little uh, bleated over bits, you know, that are kind of like feathered or anything. So I'm just going to go and clean up little bit here and there and it, it probably won't matter too much in the end but anything that's obvious kind of like a little obvious mistake or stray mark that it picked up when I did the threshold I can get rid of even if you don't want to change your drawing like say you don't like any of these lines here like I don't like that line right there you can go fix your stuff a little bit here and clean up some lines add something in if you need to Especially over here, I don't want those little bits showing. Like this gun never, was, I wasn't never totally happy with the, the edge of some of this gun that I got right here. You can kind of clean things up if you want. And you can also paint black too if you need to draw in something as well. But I don't want to spend forever doing this, but you know, you want to clean it up as much as you need to on your picture. Yeah, and, th and this is a great time to uh, fix anything. I'm going to hit X and I can paint, bring it to black and I can kind of add some in. I can bring it white and I can do a little bit there and add some white in. That might be a good spot here, I think. Got most of the obvious things. And this isn't, you know, you can clean things up later too if you need to. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now it's time to get rid of all the white. So I'm going to select it with a magic wand tool. Make sure I've got the magic wand tool. I'm going to select the white. And I'm going to hit delete. And hopefully nothing changes. Hit command D to deselect. And hopefully it looks the same. But really, what I've got now is a transparent drawing with a back. Transparent, actually, OK? Now I have the white background here, so you can st should still look the same. But really, I did that to 
the drawing. Okay? So now, my ink layer, I am going to lock the transparent pixels. This is really important, okay? So I'm gonna lock it right there with this little button. And now I cannot paint. Now watch what happens. Oh, let me just get another color so you can see if it's obvious. Hit B. So I'm back on my brush. Now I can't paint anywhere on that layer except on the lines that are already there. And that's great. So I can actually color some of my lines and do some cool stuff. All right, so I think we're ready to start painting. We're all prepped up. Our ink layer is locked, ready to go. Um, and yeah, let's get painting now. Let's uh, make sure we've saved our document. File, oh, I can't do it because it's already saved. Wait, no, there we go. File, save as, or hit save for the first time. And make sure you save it. I would name it something um, obvious. And I always put a one because I might have multiple versions like as I go along. And uh, yeah, it should be a Photoshop file already. Make sure you hit save. I already did it, so I don't need to do it. And then we're good to go. Okay, so one thing I would um, think would be a good idea to do is to open up a reference image. So this is the drawing or the uh, picture I used for reference. Actually, I found another one that was flipped, but I like the, the way you, know, you can see a little more of the body here. So it's the actual same one I used when I drew it. And what I want to do is open it up and I'm just going to open up another Photoshop document. Open with Adobe Photoshop. And that way I've got it there for reference if I need to look back and just see anything. Okay, but now there I've got it in the back here if I need to refer to it and check out some colors. Okay, so let's get going here on the painting. Let's go ahead and make a new layer. Hit that little uh, triple drop down button right here. New layer. And there it is. Let's hit hiding down there. And I'm going to call it skin. And this is where I'm gonna just kind of lay out the skin here. So, B for brush. I'm gonna find a nice, solid kind of uh, filled brush here. Square heart, now. Nah, I'll do a uh, round. Looking at all my brushes here, yeah, that's a good one. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bigger here, my brush, by holding down the brackets, the uh, right bracket. I'm gonna zoom in, Command Plus. And I just wanna kind of, it's not skin color. <laughs> I need to find a skin color. So I'm just looking here at what I've got in my palettes. I'm going to kind of make it a little peachier. Let me look at her skin a little bit. And make it a little redder, a little lighter. I kind of just start with something that looks close to it and kind of adjust it from there. All right, there we go. And this is just a base. Now, when I'm coloring here, notice it's covering everything up. That's because I have it on top. Okay, so I need to move it below. There we go. There we go. Okay, now the skin's below. Now I can paint. And just kind of knocking out all this area. And I'm trying to be fast, so if you accidentally color a little bit over, I'm not gonna stress it right now. So I'll go, I'm just gonna go underneath here. Again, I'm trying to go fast. So if I get behind my hair or this outfit, I'm not gonna worry about it because the skin is gonna go below it. Okay, there we go. We'll make a new layer. We're gonna call this one hair. Okay, let's look at the red hair a little bit. Um, so let's see if anything looks close to it here. So it's obviously way too dark. It's a little more orangey than that, isn't it? A little more brown. So just trying to use my HSB sliders. By the way, if you don't have the HSB sliders showing, uh, you can change it right there, this triple drop down. I think it usually defaults into RGB sliders, but I think HSB is a little more helpful for painting. Okay, so let's try that. I'm going to switch back to my other drawing here. I'm going to use that. I'm on my hair layer now. And now I'm going to be a little more careful because this is going to show. But I'm just trying to block in all color. 
and as I was saying before, there are many ways to color, and uh, sometimes a more of a comic book style, which is kind of is going to end up looking like anyways. We have going for it, but um, people use a flat layer, which is another way I teach how to paint, and you're doing all this with a lasso tool, and. I think it might be a slightly faster way, but it's also a slightly more confusing way to color for students, as I've found. And if you mess up, it's not a big deal. You can just go back and erase it or undo your stroke. A lot of times that's what I'll do. But if I have my pen down for a long time, it might undo too much. So um, be sure to lift your pen every now and then so you can undo and not run into that issue. And I got to be a little more careful here on this side because this is supposed to look behind, like it's behind the skin on this side of the face here, yet the layer is really on top of the skin. Then, as I'm going, if I have a bigger area to paint, I'll hit the brackets really quickly and make the brush larger. And if I need to get like to a thinner area, I'll go ahead and hit the bracket to make it smaller, the left uh, bracket. So left and right brackets, um, like my finger for now, or it's constantly just, it's hovering right above them, or it's actually touching them. I'm actually have them resting on, my finger resting on those two buttons right now as I kind of fill things in. Okay, and I have to just decide like what's going on here. Like, is it all supposed to be here? There are gaps. You just need to make decisions where it's not clear. There we go. All right, moving on. Let's go new layer. Let's go um, suit. Cat suit, spy suit. I don't know what else to call it. Okay, so let's look at the picture here. And what color is it? So we can actually take a little sample if we want. And obviously, so we can look and see that's really dark, black, a lot of grays, not really too much color in this gray. That's very neutral gray. Sometimes you'll see a lot of blues and stuff. But I think this was all photoshopped in here, obviously. Um, you know, and so you're not getting the color from the sky or anything in this picture, which is fine for us. I'm just looking, and it's all very, very neutral. You can see the saturation is very low, which means there's not a lot of color in it. This is making it. It's very. Um, um, just a gray without any color, right? Sometimes grays have color in it, like this. Like this could be called a gray, but it's more of a brownish gray. You can see a little bit in there, different tone. Okay, so we got pretty much just neutral grays here for her. Now we could change that if we wanted to, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and fill this in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna do a medium gray, I think, right there. Go to my brush. Okay, once again, I'm on my new layer, and it's on top of everything. So now I want to be careful, because this is on top of the skin. Okay, I'm just going to cover, color everything here underneath. That's going to be fine. Uh, okay, so we have details like these little armband things. And I have to decide whether I want to put them on a different layer or paint them on this layer. I think I'm going to make one more layer and do all the details on that layer. So it'll be kind of spaced out. So I'm not going to bother painting it. Oh, and I got some skin down here too. Forgot about the fingers. I got to add that in. Okay, just the area of the gloves there. Yeah, I'm not stressing that it's going behind this. Doesn't matter. Behind the belt is what I'm talking about. It's all fine. Slide back here. And see, I went out of line there a little bit. I'm not going to stress it right now. Maybe I'll fix it later or whatever. As long as it's little, it doesn't matter. So I think in this stage, it's helpful just to go and not sit and hem and haw about whether something should be on a new layer too much. I mean, it, it takes two seconds to make a new layer. So if there's a debate, I mean, just make it or whatever, or, or just don't make it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. OK, so let's see what we've got now. I'm going to take this off. So here's what I've got underneath, all these little gaps, but 
shouldn't matter. This is all hiding beneath the black. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go ahead and add in those fingers here. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna hold down Option so I can select the original skin color I had. And I'm gonna add in the fingers here. Okay, let me get a good brush here for my eraser. And a little over. I just wanted something more solid. I would erase a defined shape. Okay, and out of this finger over here. Okay, there we go. All right. Let's see. I'm going to go up to the suit layer again. I'm going to make a new layer. We'll see. Possibly, well, my last base layer. We're going to do another layer on top, but. That's later. So we'll call this details. Okay, so let me just double check everything. I got skin, got hair, got suit, and I got details. Okay, so when I look at here, uh, you can't even see her armbands, but uh, I know in the comics they're like yellow. So let's go ahead and make them like yellow. -y, which I'm gonna do an orange for because, let's see, I'm gonna do yellow. I'm gonna make it a little more orange. Because in the comic, I know they're yellow. Oops. Oh, my eraser is still. Nope, I'm on the wrong tool. Completely not sure how I got there. And if I don't like the yellow, we can always change it later. But I, I just know in the comic books, they're like typically yellow. Okay. So, gun detail. What color should the gun be? Well, it's metal, so it's gray ish. It's kind of, but, but metal's really not gray. It's kind of reflective of the environment. Now, we don't have an environment, so I think I'm going to go my neutral gray to start with again, and then I'm going to make it a little bit blue to give it a different kind of color than the suit. I don't want it exactly the same color. So I've got a very kind of uh, desaturated blue going here bluish gray. And the red's got the other one here. And to the eraser because I went a little bit over the fingers there. And this layer is on top. So you got to be a little more careful with it. All right, let's see here. What else? Um, I can't remember when I, drew, I didn't draw this that long ago and I still can't remember if these were metal or not. But I'm going to go ahead and make them same color here and it's just to bring a little different something there and I, can, I can always change it later actually that's part of the strap I'm gonna leave that what it is I know that was black but I'm gonna change it just to give it a different kind of thing going maybe I'll make these straps different as well we'll see I can always change it back but just to get break it up a little bit all right now she's got a little red dark red little icon there so I'm going to pick this maroon here and see how this works. Of course, I'm still on my details. Okay, that'll work for me. That'll work. Okay, let's get up to her face and add some details here. So I'm going to get her skin color, and I'm going to make it a little more red. We can look at the picture here. And obviously it's a little more pinkish, but I like to take my skin color and kind of Manipulate it from there a little bit, maybe a little more saturated, a little darker. So it, at least the starting point is like my skin color. I find it kind of tends to match a little bit better than if I started with a completely different pink or something like that or whatever. Okay. Eyeballs. Skin color again. Desaturate it so it looks close to white. It's already pretty light, the skin color. And now I'm going to paint that in there. Not white, but kind of uh, off-white based on the skin color because your eyeballs aren't really totally white. Okay, so this little uh, inside part of the eye, I just know that's kind of fleshy. So I'm going to kind of use this pink I've got going here. And what color are her eyes? can't remember what color Scarlett Johansson's eyes are. 
but have to look that up. Um, now I got to debate whether I want to put this on a new layer or keep it on the same layer because I have these things closing, like touching together right there. I think I can just do it on the same layer for simplicity's sake. And she's got kind of hazel eyes, meaning they're kind of a uh, light green, kind of brown. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pick a green. But I don't want it that bright green. I'm going to desaturate it a bunch. Maybe darken it up a little bit. And let's start with that. Let's see. Okay, I think I've got most of her blocked out in some simple colors. Pretty good to go. I'm just going to take a quick little look around and see any mess ups I did. So I, I zoomed in a little bit. I'm going to clean anything up I see. So I'm going to go to the hair layer um, and I'm going to clean up that one first a little bit. And I can see where things are overlapping or not overlapping enough. And I'm going back and forth between my brush and my eraser. And how much you clean it up is kind of up to you. And I mean, if it's not that messy, sometimes not cleaning it up actually looks kind of cool. Like it just kind of looks a little more organic. Okay, so I'm gonna go to her skin because I can see little bits in the skin. Again, I'm using Option to select the same color. Sorry, I saw a little bit there and it threw me off. All right, I think other than that, let's see, the skin might be okay. B for brush. Over here, I got overlapped quite a bit. And okay, let's go to the suit next. And corner there. Tip of the shoe there. And there. All right, and next I got my details. So here you can see we got to erase a little bit. I forgot to select the right color option. Okay, just looking at the other things, looking okay, looking okay. And everything else looks okay. Let's see, lips. Okay, so we got all situated. We've got um, all the different areas that we're gonna paint broken up by layers and broken up into different colors. And I think we're ready to start painting. So we'll do that in the next video and I'll see you there.